All right, guys, so we've created our catalog. We're in the import dialog view, and we have our correct folder selected here. If you guys haven't gotten to this point already, get to this point. Um, just hit pause and then hit play when you're ready to go. Now we're going to go over the different actions that we have uh, as far as copying, moving, adding, and then we'll go over all the different options on this right side panel as far as our import options go. Okay, so first of all, these different options up here. So we have we have four different ways to import. We can copy as a DNG, which is basically going to take those original files and it's going to copy it's going to create a copy and convert them to a DNG. And a DNG, I think we've talked about before, is the digital negative file by Adobe, which is kind of use uh, it's used in basically any application. It's kind of a neutral negative file that can be used in th throughout other, you know, editing applications. So if you guys have a use for it, then go for it. I don't use any other application other than Photoshop and Lightroom, so I really don't have a use for DNGs, so I don't I pretty much never use that option. Um, the next option we have is copy, and this will just take the original files, it'll create a copy of them and place them at the new location that you you specify. By the way guys, I'm sure you guys can see, but if you guys ever forget these things, it does remind you what each one of these actions do right here underneath whatever option you have selected. Okay, now moving the files is actually going to take those original files uh, from the original location and it's going to move them to the new location. Now I wouldn't recommend doing this if you guys are importing directly off of CF cards. The reason being is that if something happens, if something goes wrong in that import process, well you're essentially transferring them and deleting them from the CF card and moving them to that folder. So if something happens there, you only have, you can't go back to the CF card to find the originals anymore. You want to move basically if you already have, like let's say you've uh, you've put a copy of the files onto your desktop or somewhere onto the computer already and you just want to move them to a new location but you have a backup of those images somewhere else so it doesn't really matter then you can move those images um, but yeah don't don't move them off of a CF card or off the original location next we have add alright so adding is going to add these files to the catalog without moving them so basically if you've already placed your images in the correct folder inside of the right catalog folder and it's already in the structure that you want then you can just add them to the catalog without actually moving those files. Now if you say like you add those files off of a CF card or let's say you add them and they're on an external laptop uh, hard drive, well it's only going to be able to access those files so long as that media is attached to the computer because it hasn't actually moved them from that location. So if you unplug your laptop drive with those images on it, then you'll no longer have access to them in your catalog file. Okay, so these are the different import options. Now what we're going to do for the purpose of the tutorial, we've already placed our raw files inside of the folder. Now I want to move them to the folder that I want to, like uh, my choosing. This is kind of our workflow, how we do everything. We put all of our files into a folder called 00 Originals, which is in the main catalog folder for whatever catalog we're working on. So what I'm going to do is select Move, and then I'm going to go over to the right side, and I'm going to select the first and most important option here, which is the destination which I'm not sure why it's on the bottom because it should be on the top but whatever. So we're going to select the destination. Um, right here I have my desktop folder. The Lightroom tutorial catalog is already selected. If it's not just go to and select it um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put it into a subfolder. So check this option for subfolder and I'm calling the subfolder zeros originals. I had it already typed in so I'm just going to retype it in. Alright, so now it's going to go into Zero's Originals in my Lightroom tutorial catalog. It's going to move them from the raw files, uh, raw folder over to this folder. So after it's done, we shouldn't have anything left in this raw folder. We can delete that out. Okay. Now let's go over the different import options that we have over here, starting with file handling. You guys can shrink this back up if you guys prefer. Um, so the first option we have is rendering previews. Now basically what is a preview well when you're working in Lightroom if you're expanding images to like the loop view or if you're working in the develop module if you have if you haven't rendered previews yet or if previews is on minimal it's going to render a preview of that file every time you click from one image to the next so it'll take a few seconds depending on how fast your computer is to actually load up and render those previews if we render the preview now well it's going to render all those full previews uh, as we're importing but it's going to take a lot longer. So what I like to do is this. When I'm importing I keep this on minimal or embedded sidecar. These are both your speed options. Standard and one-to-one -one, these are both the options that are going to take quite a bit longer. And standard you actually set the size. You're like okay well what size is standard? Well standard you set the size of that render preview size in the preferences which we went over previously in the preferences section. So if you guys have any questions on that just go back to that video. One-to-one um, -one is going to do a pixel for a pixel-to-pixel 
rendering of that image. So if you zoom in one to one, it'll actually already be rendered. You won't have to wait at all. Okay, so I like to keep this on minimal. Then before I work on, say, a large catalog, let's say I have 500 images that I want to work on, well, I would render the previews before I start working on it. So, and it'll take usually like, you know, 15, 20 minutes, depending on how large it is, it could take up to an hour, two hours. So maybe like before you go to lunch or like overnight before you're going to work on something the next day, you want to render the preview so that it's ready to go when you sit down. And I'll show you guys how to do that later on. All right, so we're going to keep render previews on minimal for speed. On this next option, don't import suspected duplicates. I want to keep that checked because what Lightroom is going to do is it's going to check to see if there's any of these files that have already been imported in the catalog. And if there are, it's not going to import those files again. So it's not going to create duplicates. It's not going to re-import stuff. The, this is actually the same option as up here. You have all photos and new photos. If you have new photos selected, it's going to do the exact same thing. Where it's going to, you can see how it says in that little tooltip, exclude suspected duplicates and previously imported photos. So it's the exact same thing as this don't import suspected duplicates option. So I can leave that on all photos. Next we have make a second copy. And this is where Lightroom is actually going to create a copy of these images for you um, as a backup. You can have Lightroom do your backing up. I, I don't. I actually do all my backing up onto Drobos. Um, so I don't usually use this option, but it's up to you guys. We definitely don't need it for the Lightroom tutorial series because these are all just you know images that we're working on for the tutorial. So. All right, I'm going to shrink my file handling and open up file renaming. Now on the file renaming, we can choose to rename these files based on templates that we can set up however we like and it's going to show you the sample of what it is uh, of what the file is going to look like after it's been renamed. Now you can set up uh, you can do a custom sequence you can do however you guys want. Um, we'll go over file renaming in detail later on. Typically I don't rename files when I'm importing because you can do it just as easily after they've been imported and I want to keep the original file names until the point that I finish the catalog. So I don't do any file renaming but you can do it on import if you need. Now next we have apply during import. These are different develop metadata and keyword settings that we can apply to all the images that we're importing. And you might ask, well, why would I want to apply develop settings? Like say I have a black and white filter infrared. Why would I want to apply an infrared setting to every single one of my images? Well, you probably wouldn't but um, because you want to develop each one individually. But where this is useful is let's say you're doing a product shoot and the lighting for the product shoot stays the same all you're doing is bringing in a new product, taking it out, and shooting, like, say, 100 different products. So nothing's changed. Exposure hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. What you can do is you can import one of those, create a preset for the developed settings on that, on that one, and then you can import the rest, and every single one that you import will automatically be done as you're importing. So it's a really nice feature to have if you're doing, like, product shoots or basically any time you're doing a shoot where the lighting and everything is staying fixed. Next, on the metadata, we can set up different metadata options. And I'll show you guys what this is. So we can actually set up a new metadata preset, um, which we can put in like our, our information. Like, let's say I want this to be my LJP copyright information. And um, under the copyright, we'll put uh, Lynn and Jirsa photography. Um, and you can, you can add as much information. I'm just setting this up to show you guys. There's a ton of information you can put in the metadata. I can hit create and now it creates a new metadata preset. So whenever I import I can select a metadata preset and you can have multiple ones set up. So let's say you're running different companies or different, you know, you want to have whatever metadata settings for different uh, jobs, anything you want. Well when you import those files now I can select the copyright information. It's going to automatically add that information in as it's importing. So it's a fairly useful um, option to have here. And we'll just leave it on LGB copyright information, whatever, it doesn't really matter. I'll just put it in none actually. Keyword is going to do a similar thing, but it's just with keywords. So I can name this, like, say, the this is the Lightroom tutorial series images. Whatever you guys want. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. You can always apply keywords later on as well. Um, so I'll just delete that for now. But you can add them in when you're importing. All right, guys, so we've gone over all the details as far as the import. We select our source, our action, and our destination, as well as the different options that we want here. I'm going to click Import now. It's going to bring all these images into Lightroom, and I want to show you guys something. If I go back to my raw folder, I believe it's this one, we should notice that all the files are moved now, and we do. So there's my raw folder. All the files have been moved now to Zero's Originals. I can now delete out the raw folder and the JPEG folder um, because I'm not going to use the JPEGs, and the raws have already been moved to the Originals. So this is how our workflow would be. Once we have them imported, they're in Zero's Originals. We have our catalog file, and now we can build up 
um, on onto the zeros and originals as we go through the workflow. I can say I can have zero one print size, zero two web size, zero three, and 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 kind of keep track of my workflow from there. All right, guys. So let's move on to the next video. We're going to show you guys how to set up an import preset.